Hey, what's up guys? It's Dario from Bluebird and today we're going to be talking about the DF64 single dose grinder. This grinder goes by various names in different parts of the world. It's made in China and in South Africa we know it as the GIOTA DF64. This is the latest version with the updated font and declumper um, which is supposed to help us with grind consistency and less retention. We received this grinder about two weeks ago and I've spent a bit of time playing with it now and I'm keen to give you my initial thoughts and will certainly revisit it in the future as this is going to be my daily driver at home for espresso. There are many reviews on this grinder online already, the most popular definitely being from James Hoffman and I would definitely recommend checking out all of them if you're in the market. I'm going to talk to you about this grinder from my perspective in the three categories that I look for when I am purchasing equipment for home. I'm looking for build quality, I'm looking for workflow um, efficiency, and I'm definitely looking for grind quality because at the end of the day, we want to make tasty coffee at home. The reason I picked up this grinder in particular is because I want a single dose. I don't want to have a hopper on top of my espresso grinder. I want to be able to load different coffees every time I make coffee. I want to be able to freeze coffee and dose single doses um, and change it up frequently. A traditional espresso grinder doesn't allow you to do that because you're traditionally loading a bag of beans, working through them um, and then changing up your coffees once every few weeks at best. So the single dose grinder market has been traditionally very much focused on the commercial side of things. We've got um, a bunch of EK43s in the roastery. Amazing grinder, I would happily have one at home but it's got a massive footprint, it's very loud and very expensive. Smaller single dose grinders have only recently become more popular with grinders like the Niche Zero. Um, Eureka have come out with their single dose grinder. We hope to get into the roastery very soon as well. And then inserting this DF64 um, fits into a really nice little sweet spot, well priced, under 10,000 Rand. Um, and the grind quality has been pretty good so far, but we'll get into that in just a moment. From a build quality perspective, I've been happy. The white that you can see on the outside of the grinder is actually a wrap, which you may love, you may hate, you can change it up if you want to, but it's not, it doesn't feel cheap. The grinder is very weighty and the build quality is very good. The adjustment ring screws on with the thread on the outside of the body, which is fantastic for keeping grinds away from the thread. And um, overall grind quality, or sorry, build quality has been very good. I've been very impressed for the price point. There are a few um, areas that I'm not, uh, I think could be improved. One of them is definitely this lid. So you've got these bellows designed to help push any grinds through the system after grinding to ensure we have zero retention. Now, some would argue that the bellows should be unnecessary if the grinder is designed well enough. I have found them useful. I've found them to work pretty well. You do get a bit of regrinding happening with grinds being stuck behind the declumper and we'll get to the declumper in just a moment. But one of the issues that a few people have had, and I tend to agree, is that this lid, although very well made and weighty, I think it's aluminium, it is very heavy compared to the bellows and it just feels a bit weird to be popping such a heavy lid off the top. So what I have found is that a 30 gram dose, which is pretty much all you can fit into your grind cup, does easily fit into the grind chamber with the bellows off. So what I find myself doing is putting the bellows off dosing, popping them back in, and then starting the grinder. Now some of you may want to have your grinder running, your motor running before putting your beans into the grind chamber. Um, yes, I think that's a good idea. I haven't been doing that and according to the manufacturer's instructions, they don't um, insist on that either. So you can definitely get away with this and I think it's a much easier workflow um, and your, your bellows and lid are back on before any popcorning would happen anyway because your motor's off. So that's a quick fix. In terms of the declumper, I haven't opened up the grinder yet. As I said, we've only had it for a short period of time. Um, what I can tell you is that we are definitely getting grind retention. And when I take the um, adjustment wheel off and take the, burr, the upper burr carrier out, um, there's definitely retention um, at the back of that declumper. So whatever update has been done, I don't think it has solved the problem. And I personally will be looking at other solutions going forward. One of the things I did straight off the bat when receiving the grinder is I removed the um, adjustment wheel, took the, the burr carrier, the upper burr carrier out and adjusted the springs inside. There are three springs on which this uh, burr carrier sits. 
and basically they, they create back pressure so that as you tighten or loosen your ground adjustment ring, um, your burrs are moving closer and further away from each other, changing your, your ground setting. Now one of the recommendations I saw in another video um, was that the springs have a, a silicone sleeve. The sleeve should be fully down um, before you start using the grinder. Mine weren't, so I had to make that adjustment um, at home before using it. I then took that opportunity to find my zero point. There is a little mark on the front of this grinder, but that isn't going to be your zero point. Every grinder will be slightly different and your burr alignment will affect where your zero point lies. So you'll notice a little piece of, um, um, well, a little, permanent marker line on top of the burr carrier here. That actually marks my zero point and um, that's been a, an, easy, an easy thing to do um, and we'll have some more videos on how to do that later on. Another complaint I've seen online is that the grind is built really strong and steady and it's quite heavy but this dosing cup is um, made of, of clear plastic obviously. I quite like it, I like being able to see that there are no grounds left in my dosing cup after the fact. It does fit perfectly into a 58mm porter filter which is fantastic and um, I don't think it's a negative um, aspect of this grinder, I actually quite like it. One of the things that has happened though is that on these dosing forks, um, one of these little silicone sleeves has already broken off and I've been pretty gentle with the grinder I think. So um, that's a bit disappointing, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get replacements for those and without them this dosing cup and a porter filter would rattle straight out while the grinder is running. The grinder itself is quite quiet, the motor is, is fairly quiet. When grinding, it's pretty quiet as well. In a, in a home setting, I haven't felt it, haven't found it to be obtrusive, um, and it's relatively quick, which is lovely. So because of the ease of use with this adjustment collar, you could definitely find yourself grinding for filter and for espresso. This particular model comes standard with 64mm titanium burrs suitable for both espresso and filter. But what I love about this grinder, and this is something we will be playing with in the future, is that you can fit SSP burrs. SSP are the leader in burr manufacturing in the world at the moment, which means that we can try out some unimodal burrs specifically for filter coffee, and we can also try out some options specific to espresso. For me personally, I'm gonna be sticking with my Commandante for my filter coffee at home. Um, to be honest with you, I can't find the same quality of grind from the DF64 as what I can from the Commandante for filter, um, but it is an absolute pain to try and hand grind for espresso. So this will be dedicated to espresso, and in our testing so far, the quality of espresso has been very, very good. I'm happy overall. One of the fantastic things with the DF64 is that it's imported into South Africa, and as many of you will know, we don't get access to a lot of the equipment brands we see overseas. This is locally supported, lo imported by a reputable local um, dealer. And um, we bought this grind with our, with our own money. This wasn't sponsored. And I'm excited to be using it at home. So guys, today is just an initial overview of this grinder, having only used it for a few days. I'm really excited to get into it and play with it a lot more. We're obviously spoiled for choice with grinders in the roastery. And um, we can, you know, put this grinder up against those, but also I'm looking at it as a home specific grinder. We're gonna be 3D printing some accessories that we found online and really, really getting to know the grinder well, trying out different burr sets, bring filter, bring espresso, and we'll come back and share our thoughts with you. Um, I would highly recommend checking this grinder out as a good option if you're into single dosing, if you're looking for a grinder that can give you a bit of versatility at home and um, at the price point, to be honest with you, I don't think there's anything else in the market locally that can compete with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We've got lots more reviews coming in the future. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you've got anything else you'd like to hear from us or any reviews you'd like to see, please um, hit us up in the comments below. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.